So very easy video idea. We're just going to look up the the top five posts on Reddit for this month on 80 carry mains and answer them. Because most of the time people have the same questions over and over, just word it a little bit differently anyway. So we just need to sort by questions if I can remember how to do that. I do not. So we're just going to look for the one that says question, right? Easy enough. Or maybe discussion or something. Discussion. I guess it's a summoner school that has question. Um, so let's go ahead and let's start with number one is sudden impact on Lucian being severely underused. I've seen this on a few builds, but it seems severely underused. You get a free nine lethality every time he uses his dash. Why isn't this more popular once you get Gale Force? You can trigger it with a dash into Gale Force. I'm testing running this build with first strike to open up the inspiration tree, then use domination in secondaries. If you're playing aggressively, you're nine lethality early. Okay, this guy really over explains what sudden impact does. Like, he, all he's asking is if Sudden Impact is good on Lucian. And he's saying that he wants to run First Strike instead of press the attack. Anyway, the new patch just came out, so we're going to look at the last patch of stats. And we are going to look up some win rates with these runes. I mean, eyeball collection is just outperforming it. I think it's because Lucian has a pretty high AD ratio on his Q. I believe it's 110%. Maybe we can check right here. 120% at level nine. So that 18 attack damage actually gives him, I don't know, something like 22 damage on his Q, right? So, and then on top of that, 18 damage on his autos, obviously. A long story short, it just seems like eyeball collection is better than sudden impact. Now, is sudden impact better if you're playing like Lucian Nami trying to one shot somebody and your Nami is running cheap shot Scorch? Maybe if you're trying to min max to the perfect amount, but to a general Lucian player that's just playing Lucian no matter what support, then I mean, statistically speaking, eyeball collection is better and it makes sense why it's better. And first strike is an investment. I don't think it's smart to take an investment rune on a champion that has a win rate graph like this. I think it's better to just play to your strength and pick the Presti attack and try to snowball early and kill them. If you did want to um, theory craft a bit, maybe electrocute. Have to sneeze, sorry, but right on the edge, trying to mute my mic for it, but we'll see. Um, so then he says, secondarily could run either Domination or Precision, but considering Lucian is more bursty, I think Domination with Sudden Impact is good. So I think what he's doing is big time griefing. He has no lifesteal in his build either, if you go this build, which is the highest win rate with First Strike, but, and you can see the win rate is complete trash in lane. Well, we're looking, yeah, we're looking at the right patch even. But I don't know, if you're trying to do a late game page like this, I'll give you a little tip, just pick Misfortune because you know her ultimate's way better with first strike. Do my first strike Misfortune build and you'll be way better off than doing it on Lucian. Plus you'll be better off in the early game too. Obviously you don't run sudden impact with Misfortune, but yeah, I don't like this. Having no lifesteal is pretty bad. It means that you need to build lifesteal, so you probably have to get a Bork third or something. The build has too many too many holes in it. I think if you're going to run press, press the attack with Bloodline, then you can you could run Sudden Impact if you wanted to. But I mean, eyeball collections statistically always showing better. 
and I run Treasure Hunter on everybody at the minute because Darun is really OP and people don't know. Anyway, on to the next question. We're going to skip this one, I believe, this hour-long match. Yeah, it's somebody asking why his game didn't show up in his match history, so that's no good. Reinstalling after playing for a couple. This looks pretty good. Reinstalling after not playing for a few months. What should I expect from solo queue? I did follow League content even after uninstalled, so I know things. You know, it's meta, enchanter meta. I'm a vein mean. Okay, we don't care. Maybe I'll just have to do this video later. The vacuum is going to uh, be loud on the mic, I bet. Um, so he's just asking, what should I expect from solo queue? I mean, this doesn't matter. Like he's here saying, Enchanters are meta supports, but then you go and you look, he said that he's in gold, you look at gold elo, and I promise nobody's playing enchanter. If they're playing Yumi, they're playing like fucking Luden's Yumi, right? Pick rate, we have Lulu, Yumi, and then we have Ash, Lux, Pike, Senna, Morgana, Nautilus, Thresh, Karma, Blitz, Leona, Amumu. I mean, I'm surprised, I thought for sure it was going to be like Xerath, Zyra. Oh wait, I'm in gold plus, that's why. Gold. That's gonna make more sense. There's your Zerith up here at 6%. Morgana up here at 9%, even though she's a counter pick. So long story short, um, don't try to follow the meta on gold. Doesn't exist. Waste of time. You can barely hear it? Okay, cool. Yeah, so what this guy is saying, don't worry about the meta, pick what you're good at, don't bother about learning champs that you think are meta and wasting your time. If you want to learn Draven, you want to learn Draven, so you're going to play him all the time, for the next like six months. Not just for the next six days, because you're going to waste your time. Now if you want to learn Draven so you can play against Draven, just go into normals and play your six games, or six days of Draven. So then you'll understand like how he works and how you can punish him better, but don't waste your time trying to pick him up as a competitive pick for six days. What are some AD carries that can 1v2? Well, so I just had a game where I had Nidalee support. She died once. My fault. Stayed mid. Roamed. But I hard solo V2 Morgana and Ezreal. I'm looking for champs that aren't reliant on support, like an Ezreal. Like, like an example of 1v2 is Draven. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Terrible. Draven is not a 1v2 champ. This guy is completely incorrect. I can already tell you what happened. I don't know what champion he played. But his support got tilted and roamed, and he tried to walk up and farm, and then he got hit by a binding and died. He got poked out by Ezreal, and then they dove him because he was half HP. He got dove by the jungler because he didn't ward, he didn't buy a control ward. He didn't play 1v2. It's not about the champion, bro, it's about your mindset. If your support's roaming, what is your goal in the lane? It's not to 1v2. Like right here he's saying, how can I, how can I 1v2 double kill outplay them for my montage clip? Right? No, bro. Stop. Stop. Drop the ego. Drop the mentality. Learn how to 1v2 correctly. You're going to sit under your tower. You're only walking in to get minion XP. If Morgana is zoning you out of minion XP, then your second goal is to make Morgana Q without hitting you. So you want to play the max range over Q to make her shoot it and then outrange it. And then when it's on cooldown, now you can enter experience range. That's it. That's just, you've won. That's how you win 1v2. If you are in experience lane in a 1v2, in experience range, you are winning the lane. If you're dead and losing XP, you are losing. If you are trading, you are losing. Because let's say if you and Morgana trade and Morgana knocks you out to half HP and you knocks her, her out to half HP, she just leaves and recalls, leaves you 1v1. She goes back, gets full HP, you're still stuck at half HP. You're still fucked. So your main priority is experience range and full health, not getting hit by anything. And it's not about the champion. Obviously, some champions are a lot easier if you're playing Sivir with a spell shield, for example. Draven's terrible at 1v2 because the only way for you to kill a minion is to walk in an auto attack. If you're like really good at Draven, you can use your E to pick up one melee creep every 15 seconds, but such a waste of time. So long story short, you know, fix your mentality. There are champions that are easier at doing it, but first off, just get better at doing it. Okay, so that's uh, three questions down. We got two more to go. Do you sell boots late game? Ooh. This is a hard question because I don't play that late into the game very often. 
I was playing Clash with some friends two days ago. We're all bronze server, having fun. I was a Felios. My team was Mord, Zach, Vagar, Rel. As I was the only reliable source, forced to build a glass cannon. Only building GA to last as the game went to 40 minutes. Silas. Team built full burst, W Ludens, blah blah blah. So to my point, is it generally worth selling boots for an extra item? Does it depend on an upcoming team fight? If your answer is yes, which item best in terms of not losing that much MS? I thought it about Yumu's, uh oh. And then the tank items that give the speed fast passive. So it really depends on your build and how much movement speed you already have in your build. But with the Felios, you would assume that he has a Gale Force. Right, so another big thing, if you have the Gale Force, it's, it's okay to sell your boots because you're getting movement speed from the Gale Force passive and you have a dash to keep you safe anyway. If you have a Kraken Slayer, you probably want to keep the boots, but it also depends on your other items because if you have a Bloodthirster second, that doesn't give you movement speed. Infinity Edge third doesn't give you movement speed. Lord Dominic's fourth doesn't give you movement speed. Guardian Angel fifth doesn't give you movement speed. But now if you do a different build where you have a Phantom Dancer somewhere along the line, like Kraken Slayer Phantom Dancer, maybe you could sell your boots for a Rapid Fire Cannon. And then both the Phantom Dancer and Rapid Fire Cannon would give you movement speed to offset the loss of the boots. So pretty much my opinion on it is it's okay to sell your boots for a Phantom Dancer if you have a movement speed item somewhere else in your build. So if you're playing a champion that has a ghost blade, then sure. Then also you don't want six crit items because obviously you're gonna overstack crit. So you would sell one of the crit items for Guardian Angel most likely, but it could be like a Death Dance or a Ma or whatever, depending on the champion, depending on the situation. Obviously there's a million scenarios, so we can't cover all of them, but basically the answer to the question is you gotta use your brain. It's uh there's no correct answer when you're this late into a game. It's like the same as chess. I use this example a lot, right? Nobody's ever been in this situation before. This situation that you typed out here, you're the only person that's ever lived this scenario because every game has so many different combinations. Like the first 10 minutes of the game can look identical to 10 minutes of somebody else's game. And then your paths stray apart completely different. And you end up in a scenario that's completely never going to happen again because it's like winning the lottery, right? You will never ever be in this exact scenario again. Sure, you'll be in champs that are similar, but like you got to decide every single time you need to decide. You need to think for yourself. Is the enemy AP heavy? Do I need a Ma? Is this a better item? So it gets pretty complicated, but long story short, depends on the champs. If if you want to sell your boots. If you're playing a champion like Misfortune that has movement speed on her W, you can sell your boots, you know? Okay, one last question. How do you guys kite? I use attack move click, but I was playing a game with Vayne just there, and I used attack move click on the dragon, then walked a bit and clicked on, clicked it for the scuttle. What is this guy talking about? But it still kept me attacking the dragon until I walked into another bit. Why does this happen? Or do I need to get used to kiting? So this guy is brand new to attack move and doesn't know what he's talking about. So attack move click is literally just attack command without needing to left click after. So he could just say like, <clears throat> you know, he's using his attack command. All it means is that you're using your keyboard to initiate an attack instead of your right click. And I think every single player should use it and you should get better with it. And you should not go on Reddit and try to be like, Hey guys, um, attack move isn't that good and I don't like using it, so um, how do you guys use it? I don't think it's any good. You should just suck it up, get good at it, and get more comfortable using it. If you don't like the attack move click, try the attack move where you use your left click. If you don't like that, try setting left click as your attack move. If you don't like that, try putting a foot pedal under your uh, desk and attach that to your keyboard or your PC and use your foot to attack. Like, just find a way that your right click that's used for movement is not your way to attack because it's very bad to have both your attack and your movement on the same button you're going to fuck it up every time just make sure that your whatever you're using to move which 99 percent of league players is going to be your right click is not your attack click that's all you need to do i don't care where else you set it i think personally 
my recommendation is not to set it to your mouse because it's better to have your your right hand your mouse hand or whatever if you're left-handed your mouse hand and your attack your keyboard hand should be opposite one should be used for moving and one should be used for attacking now if you want to do something weird where you're initiating movement commands with your keyboard and your attack commands with your mouse go for it i don't care but i think you should separate the two because the way the human brain works is a lot better and that is all five questions for the 80 carry main subreddit for the month so i hope you liked the video and uh check out my discord i'm gonna have to update all my champion builds again because the meta is shifting so fast nerfing all the builds that i make we won't be adding the solution build that's for sure but we'll be adding some new fancy builds and uh yeah thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video